we're going to try something a little different this year with our soybeans. Now last year we tilled this soil you know, two or three times, let the seeds germinate, tilled it back under, let the next crop of seeds come to the surface and germinate, turn that back under. We still had, to, not a lot, but we had our fair share of seeds that germinated and came up through with the soybeans. Now because we don't have an operating drill, we can't drill those seeds directly into the soil. We have to broadcast them. Now like any food plot with bare soil, you're always going to have problems with weed seeds germinating along with the crop you're planting. Now the variety of soybean that we plant is a non-GMO variety, which means it's not quote unquote Roundup ready, which means we can't spray glyphosate or a, an herbicide to control the weeds. So that presents a unique challenge. Typically with soil preparation, we'll come in and turn the soil you know, three or four times before we plant. We'll come in and we'll disc it, allow those weed seeds to come to the surface and germinate. About a week later, we'll turn them back in, bring another crop of weed seeds to the surface and allow those to germinate. And we'll repeat that process, like I said, probably three or four times before we plant. But this year, it's gonna be a little different. We're gonna try a different method. We only turned this soil one time. So the weeds that germinated, what you see here, are what we have to work with. Now that they've germinated, we already sprayed these with an herbicide to kill them off. We're gonna give it a few more days and then we'll broadcast our soybeans on top of it. Call to pack it down, see what kind of results we get this year. All the way open. You should uh, put it in there as the two ways to unwrap or unravel your twisted poly tape. This is the better of the two. Yeah, much better. Wow. <laughs> I Feel have, better? <laughs> yeah. I'm only going to have a migraine tonight. Now sometimes you might run into some problems with strong winds, heavy thunderstorms, blowing your poly tape right out of your stakes here. So I like to come in with some thin wire, maybe 14, 16 gauge wire. Cut off about you know, 8 or 10 inches of it and just wrap it around it. Give it a few twists, turn them down, and now you won't have to worry about the wind blowing it out again. Now this isn't something we have to do on every stake. Some of the longer runs, uh, it's wise to do it. Because the last thing you want to happen is be away from the property for a week or two or three thinking that your food plot's protected when in fact the wind blew it on the ground and it's discharging straight into the soil and not actually protecting your food plot. You'll want to be mindful not just of your longer runs but these corners as well. Now if you don't tie back your corners these Stakes will bend slightly and that's okay because they'll straighten out when they're not in use. Now we generally don't tie back our corners just because it presents a tripping hazard and we've got kids running around here. So we'll come in, like I said, with these little wires, twist them on here just to ensure that this tape doesn't come off of this post during a storm and we lose the protection that we desperately need on these soybeans early in the season.
Well, as we suspected, there's a little bit of grass competition in this soybean plot this year. It's a trial and error situation. And by trial, we decided to do things a little bit differently with our soil. The results, I wouldn't really consider an error, but definitely a learning experience. Doesn't help that we've gone about 45 days without any measurable rain, but overall, I'd say for not touching the soil, keeping the weed seeds below the surface, there's very little that came up. I mean, there's definitely grass here and there, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the results. Well, here are the results from our non-GMO variety of soybeans. Now, granted, I know it doesn't look pretty with all these foxtails around, but that just comes with the territory when you're planting a, a non-Roundup Ready type seed, such as the case with these Viking soybeans. Now, when I say non-Roundup Ready, that means it's a seed that hasn't been genetically modified to resist what happens when you put down an herbicide. So in this case, if we'd have came in here with the glyphosate or Roundup or any other herbicide and sprayed it, we not only would have killed these foxtails and any weeds and grasses that are in here, but we also would have killed the soybeans as well. So this non-GMO variety, we've used this for a couple of years and we wanted to try that new method this year with our soil preparation. It doesn't look good, but overall, I wouldn't call it a huge success, but it definitely uh, produced some decent results. I mean, this exclusion fence has been down now for about two, maybe three weeks now. And it's just a freeway of deer trails just zigzagging through this entire plot. I mean, they've got beans knocked to the ground. They've been in here every night. We come out here with a light, check it out. Uh, the pods are doing very well. Spring was relatively decent. It was warm and it was dry. Now, the benefit to that was we were able to get in here and work some soil in all of our other food plots, but the lack of rain, which normally comes with spring, had its drawback. We were planning on doing a controlled burn in this plot because all these foxtails from the year prior and the, the dried soybean stems were on the ground. We were going to do that controlled burn to burn everything off and start fresh, but we never had that chance because we didn't have any rain at all in the spring. Summertime was, eh, it was just as bad. And when you're planting soybeans, you want your soil temperature to be between 50 and 65 degrees. You don't want to plant in temperatures colder than that because the seeds will have a problem germinating. Your optimal conditions are about 54 degrees. Now in this part of Pennsylvania, you want to have seeds in the ground by around May 20th. If you plant after May 20th, you can lose up to a half a bushel an acre per day for each day you go beyond that May 20th target date. Soybeans like a pH of between 6 and 6.8. Now you don't have to add any nitrogen to the soil because soybeans generate their own nitrogen. Now as they're growing through spring and summer, there's a few things you can watch out for to kind of gauge what your soil is doing with the plant. If you notice that your leaves are beginning to yellow, it's an indication that your soil is lacking nitrogen, which is surprising considering it generates its own. If you notice any leaf curling or dieback, it indicates a lack of phosphorus. Now when you're looking at other minerals in the soil, potassium is required for overall vigor. It helps the plants establish and flourishes through the season. Calcium is required for overall health of the plant, and magnesium is critical for photosynthesis. Now when plants are growing like this, it is absolutely critical that they get enough water during the flowering stage. Not during the early season, but during the flowering stage. Now as I compare the overall success of this plot as compared to years prior, given the weather conditions, I'd say it did very well. I mean, the, the plants themselves aren't as tall as we've had in years prior, but the overall health of the actual soybeans looks really good. I mean, we're still getting a good 20 to 25 nodes per plant. The pods themselves are established. The beans look good. The plant overall looks healthy. Now, you might notice some yellowing in the plants behind me. 
That isn't due to a lack of nitrogen. That would only hold true in the early season as the plants are growing. Right now, we're the last week of September. The life cycle of these soybeans is coming to an end. So as these beans yellow, they die back, and by winter time, the only thing you'll have left are some brown pods with those soybeans inside. As long as you don't have any shattering or cracking, those beans will remain in the pods, and the deer will hit this plot hard till there's nothing left. Now one thing you can do with a soybean plot that we've been anticipating doing this year is as these plants begin to yellow and die back, you can come in and broadcast a, a cereal grain or any kind of like a winter rye on top of it and it'll germinate because that winter rye can germinate in temperatures in the 30s. That way all winter long into spring you'll have a green crop as well.